Welcome and thanks for stopping by. Whether you're new to the channel or have been here before, if you enjoy this video and would like to help me produce more content, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. If you're like me, when you see that box, you know this one's going to be exciting. Today we're going to take a look at a new offering from Zellos, but it's actually a special offering and that's one of the reasons I wanted to do an unboxing here. Even though the packaging is going to look familiar, what's contained inside is going to be very different than anything you've seen before. This one is a collaboration watch between a company called Stitches and Buckles. Stitches and Buckles is a micro brand dealer uh, based out of Singapore and they started a line called Adamus. And what they're seeking to do is they're looking to partner with select micro brands and they picked one of my favorite micro brands as, as you know if you're familiar with my channel, uh, Zelos, to partner with for this first collaboration. So this, this watch, let's go ahead and start with this unboxing. We always have the nice outer sleeve, very traditional Zelos experience, the acacia wood box, magnetic closures, nice piano hinges. And then inside we have a pleather watch roll, still have the Zelos logo, uh, logo here, so no, uh, no Adamas branding or anything on these, these package items. What we do have inside is the first watch in their Adamas lineup, which the Ad Adamas lineup, one of the reasons it caught my eye is the thing that they're going for, they are uh, going with a planetary theme for these initial offerings, which anything related to space for me is always a crowd pleaser. And as we'll see here, it gets even more exciting once we get to the watch itself. So with this particular one for early uh, early adopters, which I, I signed up for uh, for this watch for, uh, for the pre-order, and this is still available to order. I'll have a link uh, within the uh, within the description. There's only going to be 108 pieces though, so I encourage you to act quickly if you are planning on grabbing one of these. I don't believe that these straps will be included for any of the orders um, after this video. Uh, that being said, I'm pretty sure that this is available to purchase from Stitches and Buckles uh, website as well. So you can still get in on this. It's a nice blue leather strap and we'll see here the watch face, I'll give you a spoiler, is going to be blue. So this color matches with that nicely. Then you still have the traditional uh, Horween strap that Zealous ordinarily includes. And this has the quick, uh, quick detach buckles. This one still comes with the rubber tropic strap. So you're, you're getting way more than you ordinarily would. Typically, it would just come uh, on the past versions, it would just come with uh, the rubber strap and the Horween strap. So with this, for the early ones, you can get uh, this blue strap. And I encourage you, if you go to Stitches and Buckles websites, one of the things that people uh, frequently uh, get is, is sticker shock there. The prices by default are oftentimes in Singaporean dollars. So make sure if you're wanting to view that in US dollars that you convert that over. The price for this um, should be, I believe, around $590. That's including shipping, and that's everything that you see in this package with the exception of, uh, I believe, that, uh, that blue strap. Next, this was a really nice touch. They include because the bracelet, as we'll see here, this comes with a bracelet, has screw-in links. They include a nice little screwdriver uh, for that. It has a ratcheting top. It's not the highest quality screwdriver in the world, but the tip itself, which is what really matters, is plenty adequate, and you can get nice spin with that top there to uh, easily screw in and unscrew the links when you're getting this size to, uh, to your wrist. It works surprisingly very, uh, very well, and I thought that was just a fantastic thing for, uh, for um, Adamus to include with this one. So now let's go ahead and get into the exciting part, which is the watch itself. So jumping right into this dial, this is a sodalite dial and that's what makes this one so special and so unique. Sodalite is a mineral, so every one of these pieces is going to be completely individual. So there's only 108 to begin with and then on top of that, there uh, this is a, uh, a mineral, uh, so every one of these is going to have different, uh, different veins that are going through that. In this one, you'll see something special on the back here. This is number one of 108. And this is not actually my personal watch. This is uh, part of a pass, uh, pass around group for the uh, pre-production model. And I wanted to uh, thank um, Stitches and Buckles for, uh, for sending this out to me, as well as uh, for my friends, uh, Josh with uh, Horology Insanity on YouTube and Dane with uh, Saline Driver on YouTube for uh, including me in this, uh, this pass around to check this out. Really excited to get this sneak peek before mine comes uh, in the mail as well. 
So the watch itself might look relatively familiar in the case if you're familiar with the Zealous lineup. And that's because this is essentially a Mako V3, but with some twists. So the biggest thing, and we'll uh, do a comparison here. The biggest thing is down at the six o'clock position, you no longer have a date window. Instead, you replicate the 12 o'clock marker or index. You have that down at the six o'clock position. And instead of text, you have the Adamus logo. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. Additionally, as I talked about in my uh, full Mako V3 video, which I will have linked at the end, this is the new clasp that's it, that is being included on the bracelet. In this bracelet, again, uh, unlike the first batch of the uh, Mako V3s, this bracelet is now included standard on the upcoming Mako V3 batch, as well as uh, on this, uh, this Adamus Terra. This clasp is excellent. You might have seen this if you've uh, watched any videos on the Zellos Thresher. It has a very sim similar style clasp. This particular one is set on a 20 millimeter bracelet uh, that does taper down, but it, you just have a, a double pusher style. So no, uh, no safety clasp, just nice, clean, easy to use double pusher. And then the real feature for this is that it does include the uh, micro adjust that is a toolless micro adjust. So you would just slide that lever and then you can ratchet this in and out and you can see those grooves in there. You have several positions that are available. I believe four, maybe five uh, positions, uh, but I honestly have not counted there. I know that it's, it's more than adequate for traditional uh, usage for that. Flipping over on the case back first, before we leave the bracelet, you can see this one does not, unlike the Thresher, does not have the quick detach spring bars. Not a big deal in my uh, my opinion. Uh, it's not hugely uh, hard to uh, to change this bracelet out. The, this does have a very tight lug fitting, so it can hang up a little bit on you. So just be careful uh, that you make uh, make sure I would protect the uh, lugs, put some tape on there, and then just make sure uh, that you get the spring bars fully seated. The case back itself, one of the complaints with the uh, the original Mako V3s was that the milled Mako that was on the back, and let's go ahead and grab one of those so we can take a look at it. This is, and you can see the sticker still on there, but this one is milled, so you can see that the edges are sharp there, and the same thing is true for the case edge. A lot of people complained about that, and Elshon Tang of, of Zellos always listens uh, to the customers. So on the Mako V3, as I mentioned in that video, that will have a stamped case back. Well, this Terra, also does not have any milling and this is as smooth as can be back here feels very nice on the wrist no issues whatsoever with sharpness and it has a really cool sticking with it, the theme here for planetary you can see this has earth on the back there the text this one is the zelos adamas so it differentiates there between this and the mako as well and then you can see one of 108 Flipping it around, you can see this one no longer says on the dial that it's 300, millimeter, or 300 meters of water resistance. 300 millimeters probably wouldn't do you very well. And then 316L stainless steel. And then here you can see Zelos Terra. So you've got Zelos Adamus and then Zelos Terra for branding. So flipping back to the real showstopper here. And looking at this dial, I mentioned we talk about the logo. So a couple things to take away from uh, from the dial. Overall, appearance-wise, the uh, the case itself, you're going to have the same finishing that you have on the Mako. So if you want to check out that video, we go into more detail on uh, on that one. But let's focus on this dial and the face. The bezel insert is going to be the same as would come standard on the midnight uh, midnight blue Mako V3 from the current batch, and that's that blue ceramic insert there. This one, as you can see, has been changed out for a stainless steel. Uh, that was a mod that uh, that I did uh, there to swap that with another, uh, another group member. One of the things I wanted to look at though is you can see with this chapter ring, you still have the cool effect where it has the numbers upright towards the top. And then as it shifts over to the 20, all the way over to the 40, that does flip. So those are still vertical for you as well instead of being upside down like they are in many. The initial renderings of this watch when they were featured showed that it was going to have blue chapter ring like this, uh, this meteorite version here. So uh, blue text, I should say, on the white chapter ring. This one you can see actually uh, in the final production ended up changing over and going with that of the Frost Mako. So it has the white with the black text on it. I personally think that was probably a good move given that you have already with this, you're going to have a complex uh, complex blue to the dial, and then you also have the blue for the bezel insert. 
And while we're talking about the complexity of that dial, this, it's really hard to, to pick up, and I'm of course getting the studio lighting here, it's really hard to pick up just how complex this color is. In many, especially if you're from, uh, from a distance there, it just looks like it's just a dark blue. And I think it actually looks pretty similar in overall color way to the Midnight Blue Mako. It's when you start inspecting them, the differences really jump out. You've got that beautiful Whirlpool Guilloche, and of course, obviously the color accent hand on this as well. And then of course the other differences that we've talked about. Whereas with this one, you get the beautiful natural veins of this and the blue, depending on the lighting, will pick up almost like the aventurine where it gets some hues of a deep, um, a deep violet color to it. And other times it'll look like a darker blue. Other times it looks like a somewhat lighter blue. So it really shifts a lot. One of the things that surprised me was the veins. From the veins, in all the pictures I saw, it always just looked white to me. And if you look at that next to that Adamus, uh, Adamus logo there, which is white, you can see that it isn't a true white, despite the fact that in many lights, it will appear uh, as being white. In certain lighting, and when, when it picks it up right, it picks up an almost rose gold uh, color or a, a salmon type, uh, type hue to it. It gets a luster. There's complexity to the veins that are really hard to see there, but you can especially see right through here where it's almost like a coppery um, sprinkling through uh, through there. Just really neat, and it's gonna be cool to uh, to see the 108 pieces. I'm hoping everybody post, uh, post pictures of theirs because all of these dials from the early uh, pictures that, that I've seen of the uh, dial samples themselves before they were installed, you could see that there was just such a huge range in how much white and the, the, uh, the way that it was, uh, it was presented on each of the watches. So this is gonna be one that will be cold, much like the meteorite, but I think in many respects even more so because you have that white with the veins being more, uh, more vivid through there, but it'll be really neat to see the pattern. So it has all of the greatness that you would expect from the Mako. The bezel on this one is extremely rock solid, actually one of the best that I've felt uh, on the Mako, which is always impressive. It's 120 click unidirectional bezel. It's still all of the same uh, same dimensions and specs as the uh, the standard Mako V3. So you're still uh, 40 millimeters for the case, 20 millimeters for the lug, 46 millimeters lug to lug, 11 and a half millimeters without the crystal for thickness, roughly 14 and a quarter with the crystal. This still does have the Miyota 9015 movement, which um, again, this one, uh, despite not having the date, does have the 9015 instead of the 9039 movement in there. Uh, so you will have a phantom, uh, a fi uh, phantom or ghost date window in there. So you have the first click that you would click past just like you would if you were setting the date window. Uh, it doesn't functionally change anything, but I know some people like to talk about that element. You'll still have loads of loom on here. You have the uh, C3 on all the indexes as well as the hand and the bezel. You have BGW9 for the chapter ring and that is a full loom chapter ring. And then you have BGW9 on the second hand as well. And we'll go ahead and insert a uh, video, or I'm sorry, a loom, uh, loom shot in here too. So let's uh, go ahead and just take a quick look and just look at this stacked up against some. I thought it'd be neat to see against the meteorite and the meteorite, I will say, in this lighting tends to show a little more as far as color shift, but in person, you really have to see and appreciate this dial. The meteorite probably is a little more bold with, uh, with the pop for it. This one, I really appreciate the subtleties and the complexity that you get where it can look very subdued if you're trying to go for more of an office diver, uh, but then at the same time, uh, it can also uh, get some, uh, some nice pop to it as well. I started to talk earlier uh, about that uh, that second logo, the Adama symbol down at the bottom. I know some people were talking about that they weren't uh, weren't crazy uh, about having a second logo. Other people, once uh, once it was posted up, were complaining about uh, the it being a, an applied logo. And uh, I'm sorry, a printed logo instead of the applied logo, like the uh, the Zelos up at the top. But you can see that that is very standard to do, where you have the uh, logo up at the top being applied, having that sheen to it, really catching your eye, and you have of course the same same one here. And then down at the bottom, it's very common to have a, the text just be printed. I think they went for the same, same idea with trying not to draw your eye to that second. And what I have found, let's go ahead and put this on wrist so you can take a look at it there. What I have found is the camera lighting tends to pick up and accentuate it more. So from all the pictures that I've seen, it looks like it really just pops off of the dial with that, that white. In person, I found in real usage, 
especially with having those veins uh, behind it on this, uh, this particular dial, it really just tends to, to blend in. So it, it's definitely not something that I would let stop me from grabbing this. And I'm very glad that I have uh, one of, uh, of my own that's, uh, that's gonna be on the way, because I think it is just such a unique piece. So we already looked at this, but let's go ahead and take another peek at that next to, uh, to the midnight here. So I, I mentioned this before, if we're going for, uh, for, for nitpicks, I already talked about um, the, uh, the second logo. For me personally, I'm not crazy about, and I mentioned this in my Mako, uh, Mako video with the, the Midnight as well, I'm not uh, real crazy about the blue color of the ceramic that, uh, that Zello uses uh, in that, that bezel. I don't think it looks bad, and in certain lighting, I really actually like it. Uh, in other lights, though, it does tend to look, I think, a little bit washed out and picks up uh, a little bit of a uh, more of a green hue. I thought that might bother me with this one, and I'm pleased to say that it really doesn't in person. I think in the lighting that we're in right now, it accentuates it a little more. Um, in most normal lighting, it tends to blend in real well. Um, and I think in many respects, it actually helps not to distract from the dial. It still sucks you in where that's the more saturated and more bold uh, dial coloring in there. So I think that was probably a good choice. But overall, I, I think this is just another fantastic offering. I'm a huge fan, as you guys know, from uh, of, of the Mako V3. Uh, and if you haven't checked out that video, I encourage you to do so. I have several colorways that are featured there, and I'm going to be getting some of the upcoming uh, batch as well. But I, I think this one picks up on everything that the Mako offers and really just does those improvements. If you have an even smoother case back um, than I imagine you're going to have with the Mako Shark, uh, based on my experience with some of the other stamped case backs that have, uh, have the sharks on them, this is very, very smooth. You have that excellent clasp addition. You now are coming with the bracelet. You're getting your Tropic rubber strap. You're getting the Horween rubber strap, as well as all the other Zellos uh, goodness that you would uh, typically expect. And then, of course, that nice little handy screwdriver so you can adjust your um, screw-in links as well. So that makes adjusting a dream. And then, of course, now you have in that clasp the micro-adjust, so you're able to even do that on the fly as well. So really a nicely packaged item, and I hope to, uh, to see more of these coming out. Not only um, specialty dials from, uh, from Zellos, I'd love to see them getting into more, uh, more natural dials and branching out from some of the ones that are, are very cool, such as the Meteorite and the Forged Carbon, but getting in, into some of these more diverse. And I know uh, Elshon does have some of the works Similarly, I really look forward to uh, watching uh, Stitches and Buckles in the, in the Adamus line uh, to, uh, to build out and to do other collaborations and to stick with the planetary theme. I hope that it's going to be more mineral dials and I can't wait to see what those look like. So with that, let's go ahead and transition over to the loom shot. If you're familiar with Zellos, it should come as no surprise that this loom absolutely does not disappoint. Much like the Mako, the application of C3 and BGW9 is well placed and well applied. The C3 on all of the hands glows very brightly, as do the indexes. The bezel insert um, glows well also. I do find legibility, as is the case with all bezel inserts, including full loom bezel inserts um, that I've dealt with, do lose legibility. While they still glow, it's tough to make out the, the numbers over time. The second hand and the uh, chapter ring having the BGW9 accent, I think is a nice uh, aesthetic compliment with having the dual loom color. But additionally, I do think it is uh, functionally practical uh, as well. Whether you can read the chapter ring uh, or not, it still is there for you and it does help to illuminate everything. I think it's very well done on this one as is almost always the case with Zellos. So there you have it. This has been a look at the Zellos Adamus Terra. If you've been in the market for a 40 millimeter dive watch or considering picking up a Mako, I strongly consider I strongly recommend considering uh, picking up this watch. In addition to being a limited edition, it's something that's very unique. It's a dial material that you don't see much of with the, the sodalite and having mineral dials in general. Uh, so it, it's something that I, th I think is, is worth uh, adding to your collection. If you like this video and found it helpful, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, in the description, I will have some affiliate links. Those are for Amazon. Um, I have the, uh, I'll feature the straps that I had on some of the watches that are available. But additionally, you can actually use those links and purchase anything from Amazon site, and that will help support the channel. Thank you.